Good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's completely ASMR version of D&D Time Worlds. I am your host, Pete. Before we begin, I thought I could just get some dice out of this dice bag I have here. Oh, God. No sound. There should be sound. Uh... Is there still no stone? Okay, super quiet. That is good to know. Um, yeah, well, this is also the ASMR version. Uh, it might be partly quiet because I have hurt my voice uh, and I don't have the ability to speak very loudly tonight. Um, is it unlistenably quiet or is it just very quiet because uh, if so I can perhaps try and boost up the microphone a little bit let me know um, but yes so today we might go a little bit shorter than I have the um, than I have the last couple times just because I don't know if I can talk for two hours uh, but I got myself a nice um, I got myself a nice glass of tea I got myself a chamomile herbal tea with honey uh, so, uh, okay, good. I'm, I'm seeing that people are saying it's a little bit quiet, but turn me up. Anyway, I am sorry about that. I think that issue is more one of my own ability to speak than it is of uh, the microphone and audio settings. Uh, Shogun, Shogun Turtle, hello, and also hello to Xander and Biotachiva. Thanks for helping me out. Um, but it is good to uh, it is good to see you all tonight. I'm excited to do some more world building, get back into things. Uh, so, there we are. So as always, just take a moment and talk about what uh, what D and D time worlds is. Uh, as I'm sure a lot of you are already aware, what we do on this show is build a world together. Uh, we're on our third week now, or I guess third alternating week. So, beginning of our second month, third episode is maybe the best way to say it of building this world. Uh, we've gotten some pretty cool stuff so far and as a, a brief recap uh, it's in the description if you're not already familiar with a lot of the stuff we've already done it's in the description on the stream uh, a little bit about what the world is but as an overview it is a world where um, various factions are in this sort of never-ending war uh, and these are religious factions that are battling for the sake of their various gods trying to um, spread their own gods influences over the entire world uh, but kind of the real thing that defines this world and the thing that we've had kind of the most fun uh, really fleshing out so far is that the gods view the world like a board game uh, where the, each one trying to win out over the others via different means. Uh, and eventually when they're all done, you know, the gods built the world specifically for the purpose of playing this game. Uh, once one god has you know, control of the map, so to speak, it will be... Uh, indeed, the poor manipulated pawns, says uh, Shiva. Once one god has complete control of the map, so to speak, they will clear the board and start a new game, as in that will be Doomsday, uh, which is something that is unknown to the vast, vast majority of the population of the world, who are just poor manipulated pawns, indeed. Um, so we've had a lot of cool stuff. We've, we've really fleshed out our pantheon so far. We have, uh, the last time, a lot of terrain. Uh, some of the stuff people came up with for terrain was pretty wild. Uh, there were things uh, like floating rivers uh, that kind of, you know, people would cruise along and had their own sort of gravity where you'd kind of stay in the river if you were inside of it. it was one that I thought was pretty cool. Uh, there was just a chunk of the map that was just a completely unknown expanse of created darkness. And I know that some people uh, fleshed some of that out a little bit more over the course of the week. Uh, and if you're one of those that has worked on worlds over the course of the week, then I appreciate that, and there was some cool stuff, and also uh, I saw there was someone um, who, I don't recognize your names on Google, but there was someone who was very diligently, one, correcting my, uh, the way I was formatting my page, uh, and making page breaks, which I didn't know how to do, but I learned since then, uh, so thank you to you for making it a lot more wieldy to work with, and to whoever was fixing all of my spelling mistakes from... Uh, mad dash trying to keep up with everyone in Twitch chat over the course of the last couple uh, times we've done this. I also appreciate that. Um, 
And without further ado, let's start getting into some of the uh, the new stuff that we're going to do today. And uh, one of the things in our core philosophy here, we, we've talked a lot about um, these over the last couple of weeks, and I won't go through all of them, uh, but I do want to focus on uh, two of those in particular today. Uh, and those are Don't Build in a Vacuum, uh, which is coming up with ideas that we think will fit well into the overarching world, and to uh, The Little Things, uh, which is, you know, we've spent a lot of time right now on the more grandiose world building concepts, but this week I really want to get down to some of like the smaller scale, what is it like for the everyday citizen, what is it like in a very small portion of this world, and, and go into some details. So I thought today it would be a very fun idea to just uh, really flesh out one small town uh, and just build together one town. So we're going to be basically complete our own world, if by world we mean a single location, uh, all in today. Uh, and the town I wanted to do would be one of the minor, uh, one of the outskirt towns of Asanya, which is a place that we've already established, which I'll uh, talk a little bit about more once we start doing that. Uh, but I see some stuff in chat here. We have Farful 13. How do these board game playing gods feel about old men in dungeons? I imagine that the chaotic evil ones would kill the old men in the dungeon every single time immediately upon sight, and then some of the lawful good ones might try to help those uh, might try to help those old men in dungeons. And that is probably why the lawful good god, as we have things in the current standing, is in last place in this game at the moment, Farful. Uh, as everyone knows, you kill every single old man in every dungeon that you encounter. Uh, <laughs> Onyx Shiva says they put them there uh, to live out the rest of their lives happily. Dungeons are good for old people, nice and dim, with no bright lights for their sensitive eyes. It's sort of their natural habitat, is the impression that I'm starting to get. <laughs> Do what needs to be done. <laughs> uh, that's really funny. Don't make me laugh too much, you guys, because, again, I, <laughs> I, it's going to put me out of commission earlier than I even should be. And... Uh, over the last couple of weeks, we've been slowly trying to narrow down a name for our world, which we will not finish tonight either, but I do want to start the vote on the names from last week, uh, and I'm going to post a straw poll for what, uh, for what names that we came up with last time. Uh, there were some cool ones in there, although uh, I chose not to include one of them, and one of them was Ohio, <laughs> I think. If we end up naming the world Ohio, then something went terribly wrong, so I decided to not even put it on the list. Uh, but uh, here is the list of names that people submitted from last week, uh, and I'm going to copy this and post it in the chat so y'all can uh, vote on those. And we will uh, go over those once the uh, episode of Worlds is over. Please remind me if I forget about it at the end. I definitely want to, you know, say who won before today. Uh, and we will also, once again, start coming up with ideas for names for the world. Uh, so what is today? Oh wait, it's not August anymore. It is September 4th, 2018. Um, so if any of you have cool ideas for the name for our world over the course of today's episode, does not matter when, you can interrupt anything that we're doing to drop a name and I will put it on the list of names for today. Uh, maybe I'll, I haven't actually had one in the running myself. Uh, oh, I like that one. I really like Imperion. I think that's a great one, uh, Shiva. Uh, I'm going to also think of that one and, and get one in myself this week because I actually have not submitted a name uh, as of yet. Uh, so I would intend to do that uh, and we will as I said draw the winner from last week at the end of tonight um, so without further ado how about we um, we can put risk in Farfel, uh, but we already had God Risk in the first week, which surprisingly, I was actually very confident that God Risk was going to take week one, uh, but last week's winner was Osirum, so right now that is the uh, that was the number one candidate for our name for our world uh, but I, I liked God risk I'm throwing risk back in there we'll see if it we'll see if it gets traction the second time uh, we'll have to wait and see uh, yeah she was saying right now rip rip God risk 
Uh, I liked it because I, I like that one in particular because you could kind of say Godrisk like sounded like a world for a word that you could distort enough that the players wouldn't instantly go, oh, it's Godrisk and understand the whole kind of, uh, I want to say borderline joke, but the whole kind of gimmick of the world. Um, yeah, this, uh, I, I'm drinking the Celestial Seasonings Honey, van honey Vanilla Chamomile Tea with also additional honey. I've never had honey and tea before uh, until today, and it is really incredible. I understand why people have been doing it for pretty much forever. Um, all right, cool. Let's um, let's get into uh, some of the actual stuff that we're going to be doing today, though. So we, we have all of these kind of big ideas about the world and about uh, and about the way these gods are playing this game. But today I want to get real nitty gritty, and I thought it would be fun, uh, like I said, for just this kind of what's going to be probably a shorter worlds, to just go through and build one town. I want to flesh out what locations there are within the town, what the territory is like, probably. I, I want to keep this one town fairly mundane. I don't want to do, like, this is the town that's inside of a volcano, and uh, every day there are 20 sacrifices to the god of death and there are a hundred dragons that encircle it. I I'd rather go uh, very mundane, like this town is in a field and there's a river that runs through it as kind of the, the most interesting uh, feature, something along those lines, and then flesh out some of the people, think about why these people are actually going to be there, the kind of the tone of this place, uh, and then maybe a couple of things that are sort of happening in this town at what would be the start of the campaign's uh, I agree, Shiva. This is this is the that's the kind of absurd town I don't want to make, um, and the um, and the um, I, I was going to say some ideas of what the town is like at the start of where this world is kind of the state of the world is in as we're building it now. Uh, so ideas for kind of some quests and reasons people might go there, um, and uh, that's kind of all I wanted to get done today. I thought that would be a pretty manageable task for everyone. Uh, and the town that I chose, uh, or the place that I wanted to flesh out, was a town from the Kingdom of the Sanya, because that seemed like a very likely starting location. And it's a place that we've talked about a bit now. Uh, and so for anyone who has not been here in past weeks, let's talk about Vasanya. Uh, Vasanya is a town that we built, uh, or less than it is a town, it was more of a kingdom. And it was a kingdom uh, mostly uh, populated by humans, so fairly common in that regard, uh, and it was the kingdom of one of the gods, the lawful good god Lux, and it, his, and it is his final territory on the board. Um, one of the kind of events and the things in the lore that we've built is that Lux uh, was at one time grand and had his empires kind of stretched throughout uh, the world and his followers. Uh, oh my god! Hello, Imagination Studio. Uh, it's very good to see you and all of your... Oh, it's Maddie Morgs. <laughs> uh, it's good to see all of you. Welcome to D&D uh, &D Time Worlds. We're doing a bunch of world building here uh, where we've already got some pretty big established stuff, which you can read a little bit about in the description up there. But yeah, that's what we're doing right now. We're going to be building a town today. So welcome all. It's good to see you. Um, so as I was saying, uh, Vasanya is a kingdom that was once great and now has been ruined, and the population has sort of moved out to the countryside from the big grand cities uh, because those cities are no longer safe, safe uh, for one reason or another. Uh, the infrastructure still holds because they were very well designed, uh, but I don't want to develop kind of like one of these ghost cities, which I think could also be a very cool thing to flesh out in the future. Um, what I would really like to, uh, what I would really like to do is just talk about one of these, what it like is like for the population in the countryside of these places. Just hello, I love the Pikachu waves. Uh, it's very cute. Um, so yeah, I want to talk about what one of these sort of countryside populations uh, are like. So yeah, let's let's get into it. Um, for one thing, we're going to need a name for our town, and I don't think we need to spend a long time, like, the name for our world, which we've been working on. I think we can just uh, pull one right up the top of the dome. So, do any of you have good ideas for what we can just call this arbitrary kind of countryside rustic village? Uh, I don't in particularly. 
uh, have anything. Uh, usually my own personal naming conventions when I'm naming things is I'll just look at uh, I'll just look at text around me and combine words randomly uh, to try and make something that sounds sort of um, that makes something that sounds sort of uh, uh, but of course Bionic Sheba that sounds sort of fantasy-ish. Uh, so the words on this random card I picked up were fresh drained. Uh, so I might uh, I might call a town. Actually, I just like the word Resh uh, as a possible town name. Uh, just R E S H S H. Uh, we have a Startingville. Be uh, we have Startingville Beginner Town. Uh, <laughs> of course, Viatic Shiva. You would say Startingville Beginner Town. Uh, we have Rustic. I, I like Rustic. Uh, Old Meadow. I love Old Meadow. Uh, oh, I also, uh, Tangerine Paracel Welcome says, uh, Aliran. I also really like that. Uh, and I think, oh, I spelled Resh very wrong. Um, and I actually don't even think I need my dumb name. Your guys' names are way better. Uh, we're just gonna go with, uh, we're gonna go with one of those, and we will decide that a little bit later on. Uh, so, whichever one seems to, seems to fit well, uh, as we go into it, I think will be a good way to do this. So what do you think is in this town? So let's start out with, uh, I wrote buildings, uh, but that is more of an idea of, oh, Barton's also really good. Uh, I'd love to go to Barton's. There's something, uh, oh, and I see uh, Ofkal and uh, Milier. Ofkal. Oh, this is a this is gonna be a fight to the death. Uh, we may have to do a discreet straw poll now because we have all of these awesome names that you guys are coming up with. Uh, oh man, Barton though feels so right to me. I'm favoring Barton right now. Uh, I can imagine just being a peasant and just gotta get back to old Barton to tend to the cows. It just feels uh, it feels very <laughs> mundane to me, which is I guess what uh, I was hoping to go for with this location. So let's talk about. Uh, what structures are in the town. So I say buildings, but really m more than I mean like what are the actual structures or like, I mean what are the highlights, what are the locations? Is there a tavern? Is there an inn? Is there, uh, are, are there stables? Are there, you know, blacksmith? So on, so forth. So what kind of locations uh, are there? So token windmill. So windmill is a really cool feature. And I think uh, a windmill makes a great like highlight feature of this particular uh, uh, of this particular town. There's always the one big mill, and an old tavern sounds fun. Um, how about we, uh, I don't see why we can't do both of those things, because we already have kind of, uh, this windmill feels like something that is going to be really defining, uh, because when you see a town and, and the windmill is usually in a high up location, uh, and from the distance, that's the thing that really dominates the vista. Uh, so I think building around that and making that important would be a cool thing. Uh, and why don't we make the windmill uh, a tavern? So also, I need to get out of this bold this bold mode I'm in. Windmill. Uh, so we'll make the windmill a tavern. I think that could be really cool. Uh, and yep, so blacksmith. There will probably uh, almost definitely be a blacksmith. Uh, I like that. Um, so what is the windmill? Uh, was connected to the tavern? So yeah, I think we're on the exact same page. I was thinking the windmill might even be inactive, like perhaps at one time. Uh, so I'll make a bullet list here. So at one time, we'll say that it was a granary. Uh, that has been uh, converted into a tavern by the owner. Uh, and I imagine someone who would do this has kind of uh, some some eclectic tastes. They're a little bit eccentric. So that's a character where we start going through things. The person who owns like the windmill tavern is probably a fairly interesting figure. Probably one of the more interesting figures in town. But just as much, I want to talk about you know who the blacksmith is, even if he's just like um, you know my name is John. I've lived here my whole life and worked here. I believe in fair trade and I like to play the pan flute in my free time. And I'm very serious, uh, which is an odd juxtaposition to begin with. But the point is, is uh, I want to even develop up the uninteresting people. But I imagine whoever owns this windmill tavern is probably pretty, uh, pretty goofy. Uh, main farm. So 
Absolutely, Max. Uh, main farm. I imagine that there's some farmers. So I, I don't think the farm would be part of a town because usually the farms are kind of separate from the town uh, and they are on the outskirts of it. And the town is where, you know, the majority of people and goods and services start to gather. Uh, and then, you know, farms kind of dot the countryside around it. But I do. Um, so instead of like a big farm, maybe there's uh, maybe there's a fairly notable garden. Uh, and maybe there's also not necessarily, um, you know, vegetable farms, but also just sort of animal farms. So we'll, I will add uh, animal farms, like the book, but of course, um, and apothecary, tangerine parasol, and apothecary. Um, I think that is something that every, uh, I think that's something that just about every kind of basic fantasy town uh, is going to require. Um, what if the t windmill tavern was run by a quirky gnome who has an artificer's lab above it where the spinning wheel is? Uh, I think that that is a one, a really, is, well, it's, I think that's a really awesome idea, but I was hoping to go, like, really kind of simple and down to earth on this one. Uh, as a divining thing, because the kingdom of Vasanya is sort of this lawful good human kingdom. It's really your, your very basic human kingdom, and we have, like, a whole place for gnomes that we're going to, I think do on another day so i'd like to like i'm gonna hold on a second i want to keep it though uh quirky gnome artificer's lab above where the spinning wheel is i, I want to hold on to the idea and use it elsewhere uh so i'm just gonna and if people have like cool ideas for the world at large um that they have been like wanting to get out on the stream also we can we can do that today uh so uh, i'm gonna throw that in people and we're just gonna insert a row uh and actually you know what? i will oh wait i did not mean to do that i meant to add a row not distribute the rows insert row below uh and we're just gonna put that description there uh, paste without formatting uh and so let me get that uh link for everybody um if you're interested in looking at the document that i'm editing in real time so you can look at some of the other um, if you can listen, to look at some of the other stuff that we're working on, let me posterino that there. Um, you are welcome to do that. Uh, that is the link for it. And that way you can, uh, see everything that's happening as it's happening. Uh, all right, let's go back down to what we're working on. Um, so I have it set up, oh, link deleted. Um, actually, it looks like for some people it was not deleted because I saw a bunch of people all of a sudden pop in uh, Shogun. But what I'm going to do is copy and paste that again. And, oh, thank you very much for hosting us, Maddie. It's always good to see you. Uh, and also, I forgot to mention this, but Maddie Morgs is an awesome streamer himself. Uh, I highly recommend that you check out his channel, which is obviously named... Uh, which is obviously named Maddie Morgs, where he does stuff, of, I think, very similar to this. So if D&D &D time... Uh, if D&D &D time, like you know, brews or worlds is something that you like where, where you're into just, you know, kind of talking about the game and doing this world building stuff. He does a ton of like character creation uh, where he builds out characters and fleshes out backstories and it's awesome. And I highly recommend checking out his channel. He's also just a cool dude. So, um, also thank you very much for hosting Shogun Turtle. Uh, uh, I, also, anyway, I'm going to post for, if it was deleted for you, I'm also just going to post the link to that document in the Hangout on our Discord. If you're not on the Discord already, it's linked underneath the chat here. So, uh, where were we? I think there were some cool ideas, uh, and I'm on screen share, so you're seeing as I'm, I'm doing all this stuff. So, um, Apothecary. Yeah, I'm going to put that in the same category as Potion Shop. Because I imagine this place is... Uh, I mean, I think the apothecary probably has, like, a few potions available. I think that would make a lot of sense. Um, uh, I'm going with all shops being decentralized, mainly run out of people's homes. So I love that. Uh, I love that, Shiva. So I'm going to put that even under the category of tone. Uh, because I think that fits really well with some of the stuff that we've been talking about, Vasanya. This, them being this sort of place that has been taken out of... The world where these people are just kind of moving and, and setting up villages outside of their great cities because their kingdom is, is falling and sort of losing in this grand cosmic game uh, and I, I think it makes a lot of sense for people to just be working out of their homes barely getting by uh, and you know they don't want to dedicate the work and the lumber and resources to building discrete you know living in workspaces I think that uh, I think that makes a ton of sense 
um, Shogun Turtle, do these animal farms work as representations of communism? You know, they very well may. <laughs> uh, they very well may. Who could say for sure? I guess only you and your game, if you ever ran something in this world, could uh, could be 100% about that. Uh, carpenter slash toy maker. I, I love that. Um, and I think that's another... Uh, I think that's another very uh, interesting story right there because the person who in this place that's kind of downcast and on the losing end of this world, uh, this individual is kind of combating that by, you know, in addition to being practical and building houses and also is just building toys and something that's purely a luxury for children to enjoy or, you know, I guess adults to enjoy if they like toys. Uh, I think that could be another very interesting character that we're starting to create just with that, just the statement of making a toy maker. Um, uh, so let's see, what else? Uh, Apothecary would probably be owned by a kindly old woman, and then parentheses, secret, secret witch. Yeah, that is the classic, isn't it? The, 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 uh... I can't even imagine an apothecary that doesn't have an old woman that is that you kind of low key think is a witch running it or and or kind of like a, a middle aged kind of creepy dude who you know is definitely a witch. Uh those are the two apothecaries that I feel like I've encountered uh the most over the uh, my time at least as a player. So I'll put it um and maybe we um maybe we want to make this a table, uh, which, and by maybe, I mean I'm going to make it a table. Da -da -ba -ba -ba. Insert a table. I'll make it this many columns. And that way we can kind of look at them side by side. So we have this kind of cool windmill tavern. Uh, we got a blacksmith. And then as we're like carpenter, toy maker, we can talk about you know, the individuals and associate them with their appropriate homes because, you know, each of these is run by one, probably more people. Uh, and we need names for all of these. Uh, we, we need names for all of these people. Um, so, also just throw names out and if any of you have names, we're just gonna go with, I'm just gonna go with the first name unless it's a complete and total joke, such as my name is, I have no, I don't have a funny joke name to throw out. I'm sorry, I set you all up like I was going to say a funny joke name, but I don't got anything good. Uh, Alright, and, man, I wish there were hotkeys for creating rows on tables, but alas. I guess there's hotkeys for copy and paste, but, you know, what you going to do? Uh, and this is a little bit more info about that mill, so I'm going to throw that right up here. Um, cool, cool. Okay. So, let's look. So, a lot of stuff has been happening since uh, I last kind of, uh, since I last kind of looked. Uh, so, people. People working at said shops. A quirky, uh, a quirky tavern owner. A somewhat solitary, magical young girl. Yeah, I think the, I, I think the tavern owner is definitely going to be uh, fairly quirky. Um, I like that. Uh, so, and how about the owner of the tavern? Uh, how about the owner of the tavern? Grew up on his father's farm uh, with the windmill, went out to become an adventurer soldier, but ended up just getting wounded or tired of that life. Came back and inherited the windmill and decided to make a tavern to bring in adventurers to remember the old times and sort of live vicariously through them since he can't or is too old to do so anymore. Uh, done. Done and done. Cut it, print it, sell it. Awesome, Shiva. Really cool. Uh, I, I like this character for a lot of reasons. So let's talk about. Uh, I mean, it's a obviously it's it's a pretty cool idea, uh, but let's talk about why I think that's a really cool idea, uh, and that is because this character gives you such an opportunity if you're running a game in this world. This character is part of the world at large. It's a world that is predicated on these big scale conflicts, and this is someone who was, at one time or another, caught up in them. And so, like this town, for example, feels like the place where a campaign might start. This is sort of your your first quest, your just beginning the adventure, where the players are there to bardy guard someone or uh, birdy guard. I think is how I said that. Uh, your players are there to bodyguard someone, or, you know, there's a few goblins that are attacking the town, 
maybe one of the you know more lawful kingdoms like I believe Tizel would be the uh, would be the god that is kind of the horde god that moves around with these big armies. Uh, maybe one of his goblin armies has kind of spotted this town and now has it in their sights, and that's why the players are there. Uh, but this character would give you an awesome avenue to introduce a lot of these really big, uh, a lot of these really big concepts uh, about your world on a very small and practical, practical and understandable scale. You could, you know, have them meet this farmer, or, or sorry, eat, meet this tavern keep. Uh, if they ask him anything about the tavern, you know. He'll talk about this past that he has, where he was in the war, and maybe in the tavern there's probably relics and, and things on the walls from different places around the world that tell you that its owner is well-traveled. Uh, and he has stories to tell, and he has things that he can start to very naturally let the players know what kind of place that they're in. Um, so I think that that's cool. That's all. I guess bottom line, uh, I think that's cool. Max Mike stare at my face when my ideas go unnoticed. You didn't do a face! Uh, and then names for people. Uh, indeed. Uh, we need names for people. Uh, the old woman should be Caroline. I'm into it. Old woman apothecary. Old. Bold. Uh, uh, and Max, I'll try my best to notice your ideas. I don't know which one I missed, but I apologize. Um, old woman apothecary. Caroline. I like that. That's a very pleasant, it's a very sweet name. I would love to go into a town and meet just a, oh, I'm Caroline. It's a pleasure to meet you, youngins. What do you need? I have, uh, I have rosemary for your hips. I don't think rosemary would go on hips, but I don't know much about herbs. Um, so, uh, the only, uh, Farfel says, the only apothecary that springs to mind that I've encountered as a player is run by an older elf woman who my character has a very awkward thing with. Uh, and the apothecary's name is Mortar and Pesto. How are their name, how is their name Mortar and Pesto? Is there like, like, do they introduce themselves? I, I need a response to this. Uh, I, do they introduce themselves as, hi, nice to meet you, I'm Mortar and Pesto. Uh, or is it more like, Or is it like, hello, I'm Mortar, and this is my assistant Pesto? Is it like two people? I gotta know. Uh, Xanderil, Jacoby, tavern owner. Throwing it on. Jacoby. Nice to meet you, I'm Jacoby. Um, I know who should run the Apothecary, Max. Oh, I got there too late. Because uh, uh, I've already we've already named the Apothecary Caroline. Uh, and then Tangerine says, uh, Lyoth Viralin. Ooh, that's a cool name. All right, so I'm gonna copy pasta because I'm gonna misspell that. Um, Lyoth Varalin, uh, and we're gonna put. Oh wow, I put buildings in a in a row. Um, that sounds like a gardener to me, uh, and with just no context, um, Lyoth Varalin sounds elven. Uh, that's a very elven sounding name. Um, maybe a little bit of an outsider uh, in what is a largely uh, Uh, in what is a largely human community, and perhaps a druid who's protecting this one kind of small uh, section of plants. And I think that, uh, I think Lyoth Veralin sounds like a quest hook to me. That sounds like someone who's going to need uh, a particular root or flower from the forest to make whatever concoction they're working on. And I guess you could do a similar thing with Caroline, uh, the apothecary. but. Uh, Lyoth just has that real, uh, that real old elven, uh, that real olden name. Uh, and Mike Spicer says, a young lady who is a magical girl named Sheila. Um, so let me throw this out. Um, insert row below. Uh, wizard. I think wizard is an occupation. Uh, and I think every NC town having a sort of a, a young, uh, a young wizard girl could be totally cool. And her name will be Sheila. And she sells prestidigitation. I probably spelled it wrong. It's such a big word. It's too much word for a, uh, for a small man like me. Uh, prestidigitation. Uh, and I imagine it's probably like two copper pieces to prestidigitate something because 
you can save a lot of housework by prestidigitation uh, and probably has a you know a humble home uh, probably has a humble home out of which she works and is able to support herself despite being young uh, and then I think there's also some interesting questions which we could probably delve into this character quite a bit uh, and if people also as you're coming up with characters have ideas for their personalities and how they might act also uh, also tell me also tell me that because uh, we can put that in here and, and really get one kind of tone because I'd love to and I think over the course of the next couple weeks I'm going to go through and, and go to all of these locations and really flesh it out so it feels like this could be a town that you could you know just take out of this world and put it into any game uh, and use for whatever purposes that you want but that will also feel central to this world uh, and I want to establish uh, that is a, like a really good just kind of general starting location and stuff for, for this a world that we're building um, and uh, let's see uh, just think the town needs someone young to spice things up yeah and and we'll do uh, we'll, we'll do uh, a lot of um, We'll do a lot of, like, more young people as well. Uh, Maddie Morgan's only old people. Those are the preferred sacrifice. Indeed, Maddie. Indeed. Uh, and have, uh, Banak Shiva says, have Leith be her daughter. I, I kind of like uh, Leith where we have her, although I think that happened before I got to that point, is I'm moving very slow through these. I'm taking a lot of time. Um, uh, I'm taking a lot of time on all of these. Uh, I love Mortimer and Pesto. It's such a cool apothecary name. Uh, oh, Okay. Um, uh, Farful says the apothecary as in the store is named the mortar and pesto um, so that's another thing that we need to do for all of these is come up with uh, how about the column right uh, so how about for the windmill slash tavern um, I'm going to name things uh, I'm just stealing your name uh, I'm just stealing your name for before it was mortar and pesto Okay, well, there was some talk about making Sheila. Uh, there's talk about some making Sheila someone's daughter. I think we make Sheila. Uh, I think we make Sheila Carolyn's daughter, <laughs> and now it's called the Mortar and Presto, <laughs> as she sells the prestidigitation out of <laughs> out of the uh, out of the apothecary shop. So it's part wizard, part apothecary. Oh, I've received a text message. It is nothing important. Uh, wizard uh, that I think that's a good that's a very good pun that I'm probably gonna s just put into the next town that I need to make oh my tea's getting a little bit cold should have drank it faster um, that's that's great all right um, make a uh, Max says make a mic people section I'm not sure what you mean by mic people um, uh, blacksmith could be Bartholomew. Uh, why not? Uh, I don't know if that's a D and D time reference uh, because if you're not already familiar, uh, Shogun D and D time is a uh, Pete and Jeremy's D and D time has a big wizard in it named uh, Bartholomew, who's a very prominent figure. Uh, but I don't think there's anything wrong with just using the name here, uh, Bartholomew. The blacksmith. Uh, he's got that alliteration name. Uh, I mean, it's just a, it's a good name. I'm sure there are there are countless Bartholomews that people have put in there because it's such a it's such a high fantasy name. Uh, so, Barty, um, Tangerine Paracel, the wizard should be the teacher as well. Uh, I will put that under Sheila's kind of tag here. Sheila also teaches from the apothecary shop um, the local children um, and I think that also fits very well like I, I like this place where tons of things are bundled up uh, there's this young kind of wizard there's her mom who probably uh, knows a spell or two um, and, and taught her daughter these things but also kind of sells herbs and that's more of her location uh, and, and they're running all kinds of businesses because they're doing what they can to survive in a place that is not economically thriving. This is a town that is, uh, as I've mentioned a few times, on the losing end of things uh, in the kingdom that is kind of under siege. So I like the idea that they're just doing all of these different things to kind of make ends meet. I think that could be very cool. Um, 
uh, Luminarian, you're late. What did you miss? Um, you've missed everything. We're building a town. Uh, uh, we're building a town, Luminarian, and it's going pretty good. I like I like some of the stuff that we're coming up with. Uh, and tavern main, uh, tavern name, the grain mill. Yeah, I like it. It's simple. Uh, the grain mill, uh, and it makes sense. And I think um, I think that it's kind of interesting enough that like I can imagine a real, just like a real bar in the real world if it was built inside the windmill. I can imagine going to my friends and being like, "Yo, you want to go to the grain mill tonight?" Because it just feels cool to be able to say that like that just seems like an awesome that just seems like an awesome place to go so yeah i like the grain mill uh morhar and presto uh 12 out of 10 uh shogun turtle max meister got me to join um i'm sorry if i don't like i know a lot of people have different <laughs> names on discord and twitch and i have trouble keeping track of everyone uh so i'm sorry if uh i didn't recognize you and you've been on the uh the discord under a different name shogun um What if uh, Bartholomew is this world is like an alternate universe where instead of the ultimate wizard, he's secretly the ultimate blacksmith? Uh, I don't know. If, I don't want to make this world a D&D &D time crossover, although that is very funny. Uh, I like it. Uh, is there a mayor in the town? Uh, Luminarian, we have not established... Uh, we have not established a mayor as of yet, and I think that's cool. Uh, oh god, Shogun, I'm so sorry. I'm a bad person. I'm a bad... I'm a bad human. No excuse. Um, fair enough. Uh, so... Uh, we were saying there's no mayor yet, but I imagine that there's someone... Um, this town doesn't seem like it's going to be large enough in scale to even have a mayor, but I feel like they have someone who's kind of like their de facto leader, just the person that everyone in town turns to they're probably on the elderly side uh, and just someone that people have a lot of respect for and who's you know maybe uh maybe been around a long time has you know lived back when the capital was still kind of uh and, and the larger cities of Vasanya were still prominent uh has a lot of just kind of general uh general knowledge um probably the tavern keep um we'll see i like the idea of keeping uh the tavern keep uh jacobi as being kind of as being kind of this separate figure that because i imagine jacoby have established he's this individual that you know came back from adventuring and now lives within the tavern uh he seems like someone who wouldn't want to have the responsibility and maybe that's the thing that makes him right for it you know is that kind of the person who uh the individual who doesn't want to be the leader is the one that is you know is the one that is suited to do so but i i think it'd be cool to keep that individual separate and come up with a, another guy for the the tavern um, maybe have a military leader, a guy that was in a few wars. Yeah, and that's exactly what we were talking about for that guy, Jacoby, is he was this kind of individual who went out as a soldier and, and did various things and then came back and inherited the windmill and decided to turn it into a tavern. Um, you can see it up on the, the screen there. Um, uh, is there a section of the town where caravans and merchants set up a temporary shop, like a marketplace of sorts? Uh, there isn't that because we were kind of talking about how most people just sell their wares out of their homes because there's not a lot of space because it's very poor. Uh, but I do like the idea that, um, I do like the idea that there's just kind of, maybe there's like a central thing in town, like the, the windmill, which is kind of the focal point of the town is up on the hill, but at the actual kind of town center, maybe there's like a big tree or some kind of very old, maybe like run down statue that they decided to kind of set up around or... Uh, what do you think, like, the, the centerpiece decorative object within this town is? Uh, and by next year, yeah, it doesn't want that res uh, responsibility, but everyone still looks to it. Um, so, but yeah, um, so we're saying the uh, the caravans and the merchants set up temporary shops. Uh, I imagine, like, traveling carts l laden with, you know, important goods, uh, things like, uh, things like, you know, spices and stuff like that. An old dried out fountain. Perfect. fountain old oh man I gotta get these bulbs off old and dried out uh, caravans meet around it and pedal wares 
caravan days. Among the liveliest and the happiest in town. So I imagine there are days where kind of nomads and things like that kind of travel through town and uh, uh, they, they kind of travel through through various towns and peddle wares and set up shops and I gotta turn off my phone um, and, and set up kind of these temporary stalls and caravans and, and sell wares and dance and make music and on those days I imagine that that is like the most exciting thing that happens into town is when all of these caravans come and set up this kind of impromptu marketplace uh, and and that would be another fun like adventure hook. Like when they come into the town, um, they get the impression that it's cheerier than it actually is because there is this sort of impromptu festival that's going on because the caravans here, which is like an exciting event in this place. Uh, Brendir for the name of the carpenter. Um, yes. Oh, let's talk about the carpenter works. I really liked this carpenter fella. Um, Brendir. So we know that he's a toy maker. Uh, my instincts tell me, uh, and oh my god, the the adventure hooks with a toy maker. I'm you know, we could go for days about all the cool stuff you could do with like a toy maker character and stuff coming to life and all that. Uh, but I imagine that that's not the angle on this one. But a toy maker character, I imagine they're fairly gentle. Um, do you think uh, Brendir is uh, male or or uh, what? What do you think the gender of Brendir is? Um, gentle. Kind wooden toys, trains, and so forth. Uh, toy. Oh, wait, probably not trains. What am I talking about? This is a fantasy world. Wooden dolls. No trains. Thing. No trains in this place. Uh, I. Uh, but yeah, I, I really like the idea of that that carpenter toy maker. I think that's a cool archetype. Uh, and obviously, the one that everyone thinks of, I think, is Geppetto. And I, I imagine also a lot of these, like we have names for the grain mill and the mortar and presto, which I think uh, speaks to the entrepreneurialship of Caroline and Sheila that we were talking about. And I don't think every single place needs a cool name like that, because most people just sell stuff out of their house. Like Bartholomew the blacksmith, I don't think he has a name for his blacksmith. I, I think that he just kind of, you know, builds things and people know that he is a blacksmith, but he does not, you know, it's not the hammer and tongs or whatever you would call a... Huge. I like that. Uh, I like that statement about Brendir. Huge individual, but delicate with their fingers. Oh, and I make tons of spelling mistakes as we go through. That's not because I don't know how to spell there. That's because I, I'm not a good typer. Uh, oh, hey, Jeremy's here. Good evening, Jeremy. How are you? Uh, Oh no. Oh no, does he make creepy toys and just doesn't realize that they're super fucking creepy? Yeah, he does. Yeah, he definitely does. Which is sad, because I loved Brendier and he seemed like he's such a nice guy and I feel bad for him. That... Uh, and I feel bad for him that these toys are so creepy, but that's too good. Um, and I think that's, I can just picture the scene now where Brendier is walking through, uh, or you just see this kid walking around with this, like, horrible looking doll, uh, with these, like, vicious, like, kind of soul-staring eyes and, like, very realistic looking teeth that are <laughs> super unpleasant to look at, uh, and there's just, like, a kid running around with it, um, Uh, and and the kid running around to it, uh, just they they kind of look at that kid and they're like, where the hell did you get that doll? And that's a quest hook to me. Uh, it's also just very interesting. Also, I don't know what that is a reference to, so it's fine by me. Uh, it's fine by me to rip something off since I don't know what it is that I'm ripping off. Don't tell me because then it will be, uh, because then it will be no longer okay because I'll be ripping it off completely uh luminarian we have jerome jerome is already a character in this world actually i guess it's not unreasonable uh for more than one uh for more than one pe person to be named jerome or are you just saying jerome because jeremy's here <laughs> um uh 
I feel like Brendier should also be part of the fire response team. Absolutely. Um, uh, I'm going to put that under tone, actually. And stuff like fire response, like that stuff that I love. See, I love that stuff because there's no way that there, there's no way that that's ever going to come up unless you like go out of your way to make sure that it does uh, and have a fire start in this small town. And also, I think we've gone along, uh, we've gone along long enough now where I think we can name, uh, I think we can name our town. Uh, and right now, uh, I'm not going to do a whole straw poll for it, but I am going to just tell, ask you guys, what do you think is a good name now that we have? Um, so we have Rustic, we have Old Meadow, we have El Ryan, we have Barton, we have Ofkal, and we have Milliere. What do you guys feel like is the right name? Um, uh, what do you guys feel like is the right name for this particular town? Um, I really like uh, the two that I'm, I'm really feeling right now. Uh, Old Meadow sounds very good to me. It feels right. I don't know. They're all really good. Um, tell me, what do, what do you guys think is, is a good name for this town? So we can stop referring to it in the abstract and, and lock that down. Vote, basically vote by show of hands. Uh, we have Ofkal. A Barton. We have a Barton. We have a Barton. All right. And I, I'm, I'm just going to make the decision now that it's Barton because I love, uh, and you can see by the big smile, make it the name of the leader. Um, see, this is the juice right here. Uh, having the town of Barton be named after the leader of Barton sounds like somebody set up a town and named it after themselves, which is an awesome thing. Well, uh, I, I just, I love the idea that just some person, the first person to arrive was like, this place is Barton, and I'm the mayor. Uh, and this seems like the mayor, and what you were talking about before, like, people turn to this individual Jacobi uh, up at the windmill to do, you know, all of the, uh, to do all of kind of like the heavy leading and actually lead when the town is kind of called to action. But the idea that this guy Barton is just kind of, technically the leader and calls himself that sort of a trash king situation i guess i just really like that archetype uh, as you can see i've done it in other places um uh, barton or well, actually we'll go with the mayor barton and uh, figurehead is a very strong word as <laughs> there's not a lot of space in the town uh, and figurehead implies like oh he's the figurehead of like a much larger scale operation but I think figurehead is the right word for Barton uh, pompous blustery self-important uh, that's the individual that I'm really picturing for Barton, and I, I think that <laughs> uh, uh, I, I think that could be very cool. Uh, just this this dude Barton walks around, you know, telling people what to do, and everyone kind of rolls their eyes and nods their heads. Uh, end of the day, they probably love him though. Uh, Barton is basically Boomy from The Last Airbender. I love. Uh, I love The Last Airbender so much. If you've never seen The Last Airbender, I absolutely recommend it. Barton should talk like the Fonzie. Uh, this is going to bring us to a very important, uh, in a very important segment of every episode. And we haven't had any of these yet, and I think now is a perfect time uh, to add that in red text. Barton talks just like Fonzie. Uh, I'm pretty sure the only thing I know about Fonzie is the thumb and going, hey, uh, Hey, I'm Barton. I don't think that this is exactly what the Fonz talks like, but this is how I think the Fonz talks. Uh, uh, just like Fonzarelli. Uh, and what I what it means when I've written something in red text 
means that it is part of the triple X rated meme edition of D&D Time Worlds, where uh, every week when there's a very choice meme that someone throws in, I like to put it in red text, so if you want to have all of the goofs that... Because I, I don't want all these good jokes to go to waste. So if anyone ever ran this world and wanted to have uh, their Barton sound like Fonzie, just a reminder that that's a great option. Uh, I feel like in my notes I would list Barton as technically in charge instead of figurehead. That is way better than what I wrote. Um, technically in charge. I'm going to actually go so far as to say that uh, uh, that you are correct. Is in charge one word? Man, that's wacky to me. All right, cool. Um, so what else is in the town? So we, we've gotten um, a few people that I think we're starting to really develop a community. Oh, and we're talking about the fire, uh, the fire tone, and I got distracted because I wanted to come up with a name. Uh, so the Barton Fire Response, Barton Fire Response crew uh, would be Bartholomew. That would be uh, who else was on it? Oh, it was uh, Sheila, and there was one more. I cannot remember who the. Oh, Brendier and Brendier, of course. How could I forget? How could I forget Brendier? I imagine Brendier sounds like that. Uh, and the reason I absolutely adore that, for one thing, uh, uh, maybe they. I think they uh, wear a white rope around. their right arm. They just got a little they just got a little kind of rope that they tie around. Because tattoo feels a little bit strong for like the impromptu uh, for the impromptu like fire troop that they've put together. But see the reason why I love that so much is because that's never gonna come up in your game unless you go out of your way to make sure that it comes up and have like a fire start when they're in the town. But knowing that and having that in the back of your mind as you're playing these characters and role playing them for one thing it's very cute and it kind of puts together a degree of the camaraderie and the spirit of the town uh, and you can also think about like how seriously each of them would take their response as part of the uh, their job as part of the fire response crew and it's just gonna go a long way to really inform role-playing even though the players won't actually see it and I love that kind of stuff that is the world design that really like that really excites me uh, is things like knowing that these three random people in the town all know each other as part of a fire response crew. Um, you act like your characters aren't going to start a fire themselves. Like I said, you know, anything's... Uh, anything is possible. In charge is two words. Okay, I got confused. I copy-paste from chat, and I don't expect you guys to have good grammar in chat. It just... I believed it, and Google didn't tell me it was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what, you're right, Shiba. There's a 100% chance any time players go into a town that they're going to start a fire in it. Uh, but what else is in one of these towns? Um, so we've gotten a few basic buildings. Uh, what else does a town need? Uh, they need a water source, so there's probably a river. Um, I like the idea of the dried up fountain, which we've talked about. is probably broken. Maybe at one time it was fed by the river, uh, which would probably be fairly advanced, and I think that makes sense for Vasanya. I don't know if we even need to write that down. Uh, what about... Um, I'm trying to think of what else would be important. Uh, any guilds? No, this town is probably too small for any guilds. Um, we have the kind of animal farms. Um, so this, I imagine, is a big family, the, the animal farm. Um, what, kind of, uh, what kind of animals do you think are... What kind of animals do you think work at these... Or work at these farms? are bred at these farms. I picture it's a pig farm, is, is my first thought. Um, or uh, goats are more interesting, maybe. I don't know. I'm going to say pigs tentatively uh, for this particular farm. Um, huge family. Um, so, guys, I want you to throw me a huge pile of names that all start with one letter. Uh, and that letter I'm going to pick arbitrarily uh, by rolling a d20 and that letter is 12 so so that letter is P I want you to give me uh, I want you to give me 
a whole bunch of names that start with P, uh, male and female. Uh, and it's just a big pile of people. Um, uh, I cut out vowels is probably why we ended it up on different things. Uh, I already, it's already P, I've already decided. Okay, yeah, I mean, that was obvious. Um, <laughs> Pathalian. You've missed my point, was that all of the names would therefore have the same percussive sounds. You could go, this is Pete, Paul, Patricia, Patty, uh, and Thalian, <laughs> which I think would be pronounced Thalian, right? Just Thalian. Peter, Periwinkle, Parker, Pete, Peter, Parker, the Spider-Man. These are the Spider-Twins. Uh, Patricia, I like Patricia. Patricia, Peggy. Uh, you guys with your you guys with your off pronunciation p words uh, oh my god nice uh, nice meme there I like pepper all right we're keeping pepper I'm being judicious uh, I am the uh, I am the judge on this one uh, I need maybe like Parker Patricia Peggy uh, Patty, Paul, how did we not get Paul already, uh, Paul sounds like the dad, he sounds like dad, I think Patty is mom, and the rest are all just brothers and sisters of various ages, and they all work this kind of goat farm, uh, Pansy seems like a mean name they would call uh, one of their brothers who has a name similar to it. Uh, or, uh, Pancras. I like that, uh, Pat, Patrick. I like Pancras. Uh, it sounds very close to Pancreas, I guess, but I'm cool with that. Uh, Pebble. Alright, Pebble's 100%. Pebble's 100%. The baby. The baby of the family is named Pebble. Alright, that's enough. That's enough in this. And this is just, like, a big family of people. And I like the idea of, like, you know almost a quarter of the population of this town being made up of this one big family that runs the goat farm uh, and one of the it's probably one of the larger features in the town takes up a lot of the landscapes or I'm sorry the pig farm and, and you can hear all of like the snorting of the various pigs in town uh, all throughout uh, all throughout as you kind of walk creating kind of ambiance as you move through uh, and that's another great thing about you know setting the tone of this town um, small pig noises as you're kind of describing a town um, at least for me I really like to try and get all of the senses in some way engaged uh, when you know proffering up a, a description of what a place is like and having a, a feature like a pig farm nearby uh, really will, will kind of put people in the sound space especially if you're you know using music or other ambiance in your game and you can get just some general pig noises going um, but with a pig farm, you really get, for one thing, the soundscape of all the pig snorting. And also, there's going to be a smell. There's going to be a smell, for sure, and that's going to give you a, a whole other vibe as you walk into the town. Uh, Peggy Joe. Uh, and Joe at the very end. Uh, I mean, how can I not have a, a one-off named... And... Jan. I decided Jan instead of Joe, because I think it's a very boy-heavy... Uh, I think it's a very boy-heavy group right now, just at least by, you know, standard, uh, by at least by gender normative naming conventions, it's a very boy-heavy group. Um, so, what else? Uh, what else are we gonna go with? Uh, what else do we need in the town? What's the dog's name? Oh, there is a dog, isn't there? Um, yeah, I'll get Petra in there gotta have a dog uh, uh, that dog's name is I think the dog is more of a feature of the town <laughs> than anything I feel like the dog isn't necessarily always there and that dog's name is we're gonna call him dog uh, and his name is Willoughby spelled like that uh, and he runs around unless you guys have a cooler dog name and I guarantee you will stump <laughs> uh, stump as always is a better name and they call him stump uh, because he just sits on a big stump right on the edge just sits on a big stump on the edge of town 
and barks to all hell at anyone who comes in. Uh, and I can picture... We're not doing the mean-hearted stump for the name of a dog with less legs. Stump's got all his legs. He sits on a stump. That's his thing. Uh, <laughs> still, three-legged dog still runs around like nothing. I mean, it's pretty good, but... Um, so yeah, I picture, you know, when you walk into town, Stump just starts yapping at you, and just anyone who's nearby is just like, Shut up, Stump! And, you know, and he quiets down and goes back to sleep on his Stump. Kind of like Stoop Kid from Hey Arnold. Stoop Kid's afraid to leave a stoop. Uh, if you've never seen Hey Arnold, what are you doing? Get, get out there. Watch that classic cartoon. Um, Alright, so we got... Uh, we got a dog and a mare, which are very important, and I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad. I love the dog. That's such a good addition. Um, we got kind of our farms. We got our kind of our food base. We have... Um, what other tools are important? So, probably a leather worker. I, I think there's a, a leather worker for sure. Insert row below. Um, leather worker. Especially with the, all the... Um, the pig farmers have a last name. Uh, they, we do not. We did not establish a, a pig farmer last name, which I think is important. Uh, and I cannot believe I did not think of that myself. So please proffer one if you have it. Um, so leather worker. I've said leather worker. I think the thing I wanted to say was Tanner. Yeah, exactly. The Pilkinsons. Uh, Done and done. Pilkinsons. Oh, Pemberton. Pemberton? This is the age-old battle of the century. We have the Pilkinsons versus the Pembertons. Um, which of those do you guys like more? This is Peter Parker, Patricia, Peggy, Pepper, Patty, Paul, Pancas, Patrick, Pebble, and Jan Pinkerton. Pinkinson. I said Pinkerton. Uh, Pilkinson. Or Peter Pemberton. Or Peter Pilkinson. I like Peter Pemberton because it's got that Pember, that B, the P to the B, has got a very nice. I never mind. Executive decision, Pemberton. Pemberton. Uh, nice to meet you. I'm Peter Pemberton. I'm Parker Pemberton. Patricia Pemberton. Feels great. Maybe the Pembertons are just another rival family. Sounds like the town in Blazing Saddles. Uh, I have not seen Blazing Saddles in a very long time. <laughs> Uh, maybe the Pembertons are just another rival family, and they feud. <laughs> uh, you want the classic Hatfields and McCoys? Uh, I'll also put Pilkinsons. Uh, I'm gonna put them both, and we can uh, put possible feud. Uh, and these are all like these are all just very good low-level quest. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Maddie. It's been a long time for me on Blazing Saddles, although I have seen it. Uh, I've seen uh, Blazing Saddles at one time in my life. Uh, Pembertons are boar farmers. Uh, so yeah, I have pigs right now, but we just call them boars. It's more fantasy. It sounds good. Although it's hard to tame a boar, but we're going to go with boar farmers. Uh, <laughs> they keep the boats. <laughs> um, fair enough. <laughs> that's, uh, that's very good. Um, Alright, so yeah, we got a tanner. Um... I don't think there's anything... What kind of personality does the Tanner have? We have this guy who's kind of like... We have a lot of classic archetypes for characters. We have uh, the reluctant leader. We have kind of the pompous leader. We have the entrepreneurs in the forms of Caroline and Sheila. We have the kind of... I don't think he's necessarily dullard, but he's kind of like... I feel like Brendier is not dumb, but the very kind of like simple, very... He's a very... I think he's basic, is the word I'll use for Brendier. He makes toys, but he's just kind of like... You know, he's just a nice guy. So we have that archetype. Um, we have uh, Leith Verallen, who is kind of this little bit of an outsider figure in town. Uh, we got uh, Tanner Danny. Danny Tanner. Why not? Danny. Uh, short for Danith, I think, right? <laughs> but the wild Falconsons over the hill raise them damn apple boars. And having a town like this with all these little details, it, it just lets you come up with so many cool story hooks. 
um, reversed guy at the edge of town, writes strange crypting things, maybe as an evil book, a Lovecraft or Poe type character. I do like the, the Poe type character more so. Um, so the um, so this is sort of our witch's hut archetype, our um, reserved guy, uh, and yeah, I, I think the uh, I think the quiet, uh, the quiet type. So maybe that's uh, Denny's archetype is the quiet, um, reserved individual. Um, I feel like if you go into uh, Danny the Tanner's huts, he has just like a lot of animals drying out on strings which is really unpleasant, and it's just part of his career, but he has them a little bit close to where he sleeps, which is a little bit creepy, uh, and he has some hobbies that are probably a little bit off. Uh, we're gonna go with Creepy House. Um, animals hanging on strings. Uh, and that's the thing a little bit in that Poe vibe, not necessarily the Lovecraft, but Lovecraft's probably a little extreme for these guys anyway. So you got whole other places that are very spooky. Um, writes crazy shit on some of the skins. Uh, writes odd things on the inside of some of the skins. And I should learn more about what a tanner is, because I don't actually know a lot about what tans do is actually a game. Nice. Uh, nice name's Danny. He's very quiet. Um, no, nah, I don't know if I want to go that heavy. And maybe you could. I mean, that's like a perfect... That's kind of, I think, where this character's quest arc is going if you wanted to do a quest on this individual. And I think everything in this town is basically could be a quest hook. Um, all, I just I love all of it. Uh, but, yeah, I, I think Danny the Tanner, that would be the obvious kind of way to go with this individual uh, if we were going to do that. Oh man, I'm starting to, <laughs> I'm starting to lose it. Um, librarian telegrapher, uh, librarian slash telegrapher, using a sending stone <laughs> taxidermist. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add tax. Oh no, not Stumpy, uh, librarian. Um, see, I think this is cool, and now we're gonna get into some stuff. Uh, Tangerine Paracel. Um, that really kind of ties into the world. And this is some of the stuff I wanted to really focus on today. And so I'm glad that you did this because it doesn't make a lot of sense for this tiny town to have a library because it's just like this strange colony. But I love the idea of there being the librarian uh, just having a bunch of scrolls and stuff that he's collecting and they're just like in huge piles in his house because he's trying, yeah, exactly, Farvel. The librarian would just be the local guy with the most books. And he's trying to like save as many things as he can from... Uh, from the nearby, uh, from the nearby kind of abandoned larger city, and carrying them out to the house because he just cares about all of this history and stuff that he's collecting. Tanner is starting to sound like Norman Bates. No, we're not going. We're not going that way. No, no, no. Uh, trying to save as many scrolls and books from the old cities as possible. Um, and yeah, I think, what's a cool name for a librarian? I, we don't have a lot of female characters. Give me a, a cool female name, uh, uh, a cool female character here. And what, uh, probably, you know, learned, obviously, um, they're going to be I don't think they're necessarily bookish. I think they're probably pretty. I think they're probably pretty brash because they're. Um, we already have Jan. I guess two Jans. I like that. I like that. Um, and maybe there's probably something there in terms of the lore. Also, Jan. Maybe the librarian did something very kind for the Pembertons one time. Uh, <laughs> I was thinking that the librarian just did something awesome for the Pembertons, and the Pembertons like decided to name one of their kids after Jan. But also, maybe it's just Jan from the Pembertons. Not like those damn Pilkinson boar farmers up the way. Can the librarian be a half-orc? I s do not see why not. Half-orc. Um, and, and this really starts to tie in some of the big world el building elements too. Uh, because then now we're talking about the ancient cities and we're, and we're bringing the war in and we're talking about why this place is abandoned and that's, that's really big. Um, so we've been going for 
I've been going for quite a while now, or I guess not quite as long as we usually do, uh, but I'm really starting to get strained in my voice. Uh, I mentioned at the beginning, um, uh, I mentioned at the beginning that I was going to probably go a little bit shorter tonight because my voice hurts a lot, so I think maybe another 15 minutes, and we'll call it at 10.30 tonight, so an hour and a half instead of the usual two hours. Uh, but I want to post this again right now. I'm going to post it here, and I'm going to post it in Discord. Uh, and this is the poll for the voting for last week's names uh, for Our World. Uh, and I'll post it in Discord Hangout chat in case anyone gets that link deleted, which I know happens for some people, but in some people it does not. Um, so the names that we have on the table right now are uh, Dios, Kreldor, and Luminaria. I think I have a good idea who put it in Luminaria. Um, if you have a name idea for the name of this world, uh, toss it up now. So we'll do a whole bunch more. Uh, we'll do another one of these next week, and then once we have you know four or five weeks worth of winners, we're going to battle all the winners against each other and see who wins for the whole name of the whole world when we're done. Uh, but make sure you get your vote in, and please hit me with more names. I think we've only had two so far this week, and I'd like to... Uh, Vilkaz. I believe that is the name of a League of Legends champion. I don't know if that was the choice, uh, reasoning for the choice. Uh, I will put it on there tentatively, but I'm a little bit reticent to name it after uh, the Eye of the Void, as they say. Uh, we are... Oh, we got a bunch of them coming in. It's raining names. Love it. Uh, oh, da -da -ba -ba. Weir. Weir is cool. I like the simplicity of it. I can imagine just calling a world Weir. Uh, it has that kind of like old, been around for a very long time, simple to say vibe. I like that. Gorodar. Uh, cool, cool. Uh, and in a couple more minutes, I just want to give everyone another chance to make sure they get a vote in on that. And a couple more secs, we'll, we'll take a look and see who. Uh, take a look and see who won. You know what? I'm just going to go ahead and view the results now. I changed my mind. Oh, no. Oh, wait. We only have three votes. Come on, guys. Uh, please vote if you haven't already. And break this tie. We named the world Craig. Uh, Jeremy. Um, Vinok Sheba, can we just stay in Barton? It feels really safe and homey. There, the rest of the world seems too chaotic and scary. Uh, Foon. <laughs> you know, I'm not going Foon, Farfell, as much as I love that world name. Uh, check out Hello from the Magic Tavern. It's a great world. Um, you know what? I agree with you, Shiva. And this is this is kind of why I wanted to do the town, because this um, is the kind of world building that I personally really love. So I wanted to bring you into the area that was my favorite thing. Um, you know, the big stuff, like the, you know, the big war between the gods and stuff. That stuff, I think, is cool and important. But what I love is just the down-home, homey places and putting together and imagining what the lives of the simple people therein are. And I hope you guys like that, too, because that's what we did literally all day today. Um, and I think we can, you know, we're going to go back and we're going to really flesh out Barton uh, a lot more. And we're going to probably, uh, I'm probably going to just use Barton in a game uh, later on. Just town slash character is my favorite thing to work on. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you, Tangerine. Um... It just, I, I love imagining just walking into one of these medieval towns. Like, that's all I want. If, if what I roleplay for is when you walk into a tavern in a small town and meet whatever interesting NPCs the DM has kind of placed within and have conversations with these fantasy people. Um, that is my, uh, that is my favorite thing as well. Uh, Trust a Flump. Yes, I know uh, Jeremy. Uh, Trust a Flump is also a big fan of the uh, a big fan of the little things. And again, when I talked at the beginning, when we were talking about our big design ideas, um, bup, 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 uh, I'd mentioned that I wanted to focus today on the little things, uh, and which we've done. Uh, so I'm very uh, I'm very happy with that. And I got to tell you guys, uh, I really love Barton. I really love the little town that we've all put together. Um, uh, I ran a whole game in one city just focused on the city and its people and it's the game that you're most proud of that's awesome that sounds like really fun that sounds like a really a lot of fun to me uh, that's something that I'm actually also doing in a game that I'm running right now uh, and I, I really love that as well um, that sounds like a game that I would have loved to play in as well um, 
So yeah, we got ourselves a windmill, we got a blacksmith, and the windmill tavern. I just really want to go to the grain mill. Uh, the blacksmith, the carpenter, we got that fun little apothecary slash... Uh, we got mor the mortar and presto, uh, which was possibly the proudest thing I will ever do on this. <laughs> Uh, that's the best thing I've come up with so far in Worlds, and probably will be the best thing that I've ever come up with, and it was with an assist from uh, Farful. Uh, Barton is such a good name for the mayor. Uh, we got our dog, Stump. We got Danny the Tanner. We got Jan the Library, uh, the Walking Library. And I think this is a pretty good basis for a town. I'm sure there's a couple of like core things that we're going to forget about um, that are going to be like, you know, fairly important, and we realize, oh, every town has one of these. I can't believe we didn't include it. But we'll think about that, and we'll, we'll come back. Uh, we'll come back soon. Um, and uh, I'm going to check this thing one more time and see if we have any new votes in. Um, all right, we got a second vote for Dios, which means Dios shall be our... Uh, oh, hey, it's me. Um, Dios shall be our victor for today. Um, Dios we will highlight you in a brilliant yellow, uh, as we will highlight... Oh, serum. Uh, and our winner shall be Dios. Uh, so right now, there's a 50-50 chance that our world is named either Osirum or Dios. But next week, it'll be a 33% chance, as our name will be, as our world will be named either Imperion Risk, uh, Vilkos, Weir, or Gorodar. And again, I know it's kind of early, uh, and I usually go longer than this, but uh, I need to I need to stop talking because I'm in a little bit of rough shape. Blew out my voice over a couple days ago, and I'm trying to just chill. Uh, I gotta get myself a nice fresh cup of tea, get some more of that honey, ease the throat, be ready to do all the ridiculous character voices that I need to do for D and D time on Friday. Uh, there's no way I could do the Trash King right now if I needed to. I think Bartholomew would be a little bit tough too. Um, so I, I think we're gonna call it for tonight. Uh, I really appreciate everyone who come, who come, everyone who came and hung out tonight. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, this was a this was a really fun this was a really fun D and D time worlds. Um, we will uh, resume two weeks from now as uh, we do this every other Tuesday. Uh, but what we also do uh, is a bunch of other shows on this channel. Uh, so tomorrow, on Wednesday, uh, at the starting at the same time, so 9 p.m. Eastern Time, we have D&D &D Time Talks, where myself and Trust a Flumpf in chat, uh, Jeremy, run and talk about uh, just various Dungeons & Dragons related topics, and just talk about last week we did, um, and this was actually part of the reason, I forgot to mention this, why I was doing the Starting Town today, is because last week we were talking about starting a campaign, and so I thought it appropriate to also do something that was very beginning of campaigny for worlds, kind of some some synergy there. Uh, so, uh, and also, oh, thank you very much for following Tangerine Parasol. Oh, I should get off this. That's annoying with that uh, huge mirror thing going in. I forgot that y'all can see what I'm doing on screen. Uh, <laughs> it's easy to forget. Um, so tune in that tomorrow at nine o'clock. Uh, D and D time talks. I'm not sure what our topic is yet. We forgot to pick one, uh, but we'll probably do that immediately after and then post it. Uh, and then on Friday, tune in for Pete and Jeremy's D&D &D time, which is always, uh, yes, the Endless Tunnel, which is always a blast where we play one-shot adventures with our viewers from, uh, with our viewers from Twitch chat. Uh, it's fun every single time. They're one hour long adventures. It's a pretty low commitment game. Come play games. It's very fun. Uh, I would love to see you there. And that's the same time, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, on Fridays and that's every Friday and if you're interested in le learning about how to actually get involved with that um, all the links to do so are underneath here on Twitch uh, the best place to look is our website www.dndtime.stream where there is just a plethora a smorgasbord of information for all of you to enjoy um, and then Binary Shiva at Delves or Brews this week and then on Sunday we'll be running D&D &D Time uh, we'll be running D and D time brews this upcoming week. Uh, we took a week off from delves uh, so Jeremy could get a much needed break time, uh, but we'll be getting right back into delves the week after. But we're going to keep that kind of alternating schedule consistent. So we're going to do uh, brews this upcoming weekend, and we're going to probably be taking a look at a subclass which we brainstormed last time. Uh, so that should be pretty cool. So I also recommend that you check out that. Check out that. 
Uh, and again, we start everything right at 9. Oh, so I'm sorry, I said that talks tomorrow was at 9 Eastern. Uh, that was incorrect. It is at 9.30. Uh, I apologize for that mistake. So 9.30 uh, Eastern Standard Time. Um, and that's it. Uh, again, thank you all very much for coming and hanging out. Uh, if you're interested in working on this world and, and contributing to it outside of the stream over the course of the next couple weeks, uh, I always change the document such that it can be commented upon. So you can just, you know, make changes to it and then I have to go through and approve them because I didn't want anyone, you know, to just go through and completely rewrite everything that's written. Uh, but you'll be able to make comments and go wild if you're interested in, in contributing to this world. Uh, we've had some, a lot of cool stuff that's actually kind of been popped up over the course of the off weeks. Uh, that I haven't gotten a chance to talk about. And maybe I'll just do a... Once we get enough of that stuff, I might just do a whole day where I talk about all the stuff that got added in the off days. Um, and, yeah, that's it. Uh, I love you all very much. It was good hanging out with you and building stuff. And again, sorry I couldn't go the distance tonight, but just a little under the weather. Gotta, get, gotta keep myself in fighting shape. Uh, so without further ado, I'm Pete. And I'm Pete. And this is... D&D &D time worlds. Good night, everybody.